The story of the Sepoy narrative in Southeast Asia is quite interesting because it covers a blind spot, the way I look at it, when we have all the sociological historical studies about how Indians came here over generations. We have talked about merchants, laborers, plantation workers, coolies, convicts. Everything has been studied in detail, almost ad nauseum. There are tomes and tomes of books with graphs and analysis. And I grew up hearing that. And uh, once in a while, you'll come across these cryptic clues about, oh, by the way, Raffles landed with a, with a team of Raff with sepoys, or Francis Light arrived at Penang with a company of sepoys, or soldiers, or company men. Uh, so it, it, it was almost like covered up in one sentence. And Malacca is, was something that was almost a blind spot because of the earlier history of Malacca going back to the medieval times. So um, it, 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 it spurred my interest when, almost incidentally, when I was doing other research on military history in general, and I kept coming across terms like, uh, euphemisms like uh, colonial troops, crown troops, empire forces, soldiers of the East India Company, or the British forces, or the Commonwealth forces, Dominion forces, I can go on. It took me some time to realize when I delved further that they were actually referring to men from the Indian subcontinent, soldiers who served the British armed forces, at least from the time of the East India Company, and later what was known from 1914 onwards, at the time of World War I, the British Indian Army. And so that was how it, it was almost incidental. It is more like a general interest in military history that led me by serendipity, accidentally stumbled upon this narrative. And like the thread that unraveled, the more I pulled, the more that came out. And lo and behold, some of the threads led to Southeast Asia. And they landed up where I grew up in, Singapore, Malacca, and Penang. When we start with these narratives, it's always usually the Bengal Native Infantry. Now, they were here too, from, from the time of 1819. Further research, which only, I mean, I literally stumbled upon it when I was doing my own research, I was shocked to realize that from 1827 onwards, the soldiers who came to the Strait Settlements were from what is known then as the Madras Presidency Army, and they had these regiments which were individually known as Madras Native Infantry Regiments. By a quirk of sociological history, the Bengal soldiers who were deeply orthodox, and most of them were Hindu at the time, believed that transporting themselves across the sea would cause them to lose their hierarchical, hereditary social status known as caste back in India. So they refused to travel overseas, and some of them went on mutiny. So at that time, it became almost opportune to send soldiers from the Madras regiments, who were geographically closer, and they had no qualms of traveling overseas to Southeast Asia. And so they arrived in Singapore in 1827. The Madras Native Infantry regiments consisted more than half, or at least one, between one third and half, of soldiers who spoke Tamil. But if he, to be fair, there were also soldiers, the second largest group, which is just below the Tamil group, were the Telugu speakers, who were referred to as Gentus. These are the days that predated the, the state of Andhra Pradesh. So they would come from places like, you know, they were called, they were either serv formerly servicemen under the, the armies of Haider Ali or even Tipu Sultan. So they were soldiers who had now been dispossessed from their jobs, but they liked to fight. They, they were men, the men who needed remuneration and, and, a, and a salary and a job. And so they offered this service to the East India Company. And there was another group called, from, from an area called the Northern Sarkars, the northeast, just northeast of the Coromandel coast. They were there too. And they came down to the south to be recruited at Fort St. George. To be fair, to be honest, the arrival of the Madras regiments in 1827 coincided with the arrival just around the same time of the first batch of convicts. Now the convicts were not necessarily all from South India. They were men who had been in the north who had fought against the British some were transported because they were freedom fighters, if you look at it that way. So there were many northerners in, among the convicts who came here. So in a sense, the first organized arrival of South Indian, and in particular Tamil personnel, in any form, who had been brought here and transported here for a specific purpose to perform a function, whether it's military or, or agri agrarian, were the sepoys. Because we must understand that it's long predated the, the industri Industrial Revolution, the rubber boom, of the 1900s, or even the tapioca and Gambia plantations of the 1850s onwards, which is where we, we hear about Tamils coming here as workers. So we, we have jumped back almost a generation, if, if you think about the fact that back then people didn't live long past 40 or, 30 or 50. So uh, memories were not were very short back then. So if somebody had arrived in 1827, so we talk about 1837, a good 30 years before the first plantation workers and coolies came en masse, Obviously, there was a trickle. 
Obviously, there was already a, a tradition where workers were brought in. But to say that they're brought here almost at an industrial scale, in a well-organized system, a well-organized system where we have Kanganis bringing workers here and contractors meeting there and putting them in quarters and coolie quarters, that all came, I would say, towards the very end of the 19th century and certainly took off with the rubber boom of the 1900s and 1910 onwards. I, I was quite uh, uh, proud and surprised to know that there were people here who came besides being laborers and, and further down the social economic group as downtrodden people who are running away from poverty only to be ended up as bonded slaves over here. It's almost like jumping out of the frying pan in the fire. And they were quarantined in, in, in despicable conditions back up north in the jungles of Malaya. So to hear that there were soldiers who came here who actually helped uh, protect the straight settlements in a time that predated national armies, they were the last line of defense that looked after the, the go-downs, the warehouses, the port operations. They, made, they allowed the place to prosper. They gave the, the perimeter of security within which workers and people could flood in from, from region to come and get into their little ways and start their own, etch out their own livings. So the, the economy of the region prospered, I would say, largely because of the sepoys giving the physical and security uh, 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 stability that was required for the, for the conditions for conducive growth. Without the sepoys, which the civil servants took for granted, the British colonial system would have unraveled. It was not possible to govern the straight settlements without the sepoys. I did my national service just like all other Singaporeans, and I never knew that uh, there was something in me that could have been a soldier 200 years ago. Uh, I was thinking that here we were, probably as laborers, masquerading as soldiers. And, and yes, it, it, it did put me at a disadvantage at times at school during history lessons when other boys would actually tease some of us and say that, uh, um, you know, oh, you are all laborers, you are coolies, you know. Whereas, uh, you know, we contributed to the nation and all that. So they were good friends, by the way, and that is why we got along well. But in the banter, I wish I'd known this when I was 10 years old or 12 years old, uh, when in that childish banter, I could have said, hey, guess what? Uh, we were sepoys too, besides also civil servants. And of course, who can forget people like Narayana, Sam, Narayana Pillai and others who did a lot of things to help develop this region, Singapore, Malacca and Penang which were the precursors to, to British Malaya.